Fruit and Nutcase by Jean Ewer, read by Sophie Aldred. Hi, this is Mandy Small telling a life story. Chapter One My dad's an Elvis Presley lookalike. He's got a white suit, just like Elvis had, and a guitar, and he sings all the songs that Elvis sang. Blue suede shoes, hound dog, love me tender, love me true. He knows them all. I've drawn a picture of my dad being Elvis on my bedroom wall. I'll draw it again now. I'm always drawing on my bedroom wall. When I've filled up all the space, I'm going to start on the ceiling. I'll be taller by then. I'll stand on a stepladder and I'll be able to reach. On one bit of my bedroom wall, I've drawn flowers and butterflies and bees. It's instead of having a garden. As a matter of fact, there is a garden at the back of this house but it belongs to old Misery Guts that lives downstairs and she won't let me play in it. It's only a bit of moth-eaten grass and dustbins anyhow. If I had a garden, I would grow all flowers in it. My garden wall is right opposite my bed where I can see it when I wake up in the morning. My people wall is by the windows. Unfortunately, that is all the wall there is, as the room is not very big and there is a huge, great, enormous, old-fashioned wardrobe just inside the door, taking up loads of valuable space. The wardrobe used to belong to my nan. I hate it. When I was little, like four or five, I used to think fierce monsters lived in it. I don't now, of course, (laughs) now that I'm older, but I still hate it because it is ugly. I hate things that are ugly. Dad is always promising that he will chop it up and make me a shelf out of it, but so far he hasn't. He's better at being Elvis than at DIY. Sometimes, like if we're having a bit of a party, Dad will put on his Elvis suit and sing Love Me Tender, especially for Mum. Love Me Tender is her favourite. She goes really gooey over that one. Oh, in case there is anybody who has just dropped by from another planet and is thinking, who is this Elvis person? I maybe ought to explain that... Elvis Presley was a very famous singer way back in my nan's time. Mum said he was called Elvis the Pelvis because he used to wiggle his hips around as he sang. But Dad says he was the King of Rock and that is what some people still call him, the King. My dad is a dead ringer for the King. He looks really great when he brushes his hair back and puts gel on it so that it puffs up in front the way the Kings did. And he wears his white suit and his high heel boots and he sings all these old songs and Mum loves it. They get all moony and swoony, the pair of them. It's like they're teenagers again before I was born. Once upon a time, Dad used to do Elvis gigs in the local clubs, but he hasn't done one for a while now. Last time he did one, he had a bit of an accident. He tripped over his guitar lead and fell off the stage and busted his ankle. Catastrophe! Dad's always doing things to himself. He's a real disaster area. My mum's not much better. She does the daftest things. Honest, my parents, they're going to turn me into a right fruit and nutcase. I know they are. I try to look after them, but I can't have my eye on them all of the time. Dad gets ever so impatient when mum messes up the dinner or burns his shirts, but she can't help it. It's just the way she is. Like Dad flying off the handle. He can't help it either. He's just a live wire. He doesn't mean anything by it, but it gets Mum all flustered and nervous and I have to go jumping in really fast and make them laugh. I can always make them laugh. Usually. When we're having fun together, like when Dad's being Elvis singing his songs and Mum's dancing along to it, life's absolutely brilliant. I think they're the best Mum and Dad in the world And I don't care a row of pins that we haven't any money and have to live in the upstairs part of a rotten, crumbly old house with misery guts lurking like some horrible evil spider waiting to catch us in a web. It just doesn't bother me in the slightest little bit. It doesn't bother me where I live, so long as I'm with my mum and dad. It's when mum does something daft and dad flies off the handle and makes her cry that I get a bit fussed. What scares me is in case they stop loving each other and Dad goes off to live somewhere else so that we're not a family anymore. That is the only thing in the universe that I am scared of. I'm not scared of climbing trees to the very top. I'm not scared of big fierce dogs that run barking at you. I'm not scared. 
I don't know, honestly, whether I really believe in God, but that doesn't stop me saying my prayer. This is what I pray. Please, God, don't let Mum and Dad get divorced. Actually, I don't do that. <laughs> Neil, I mean. I sort of put my hands together, but I do it under the duvet when I'm lying in bed. I've been doing it for almost two years now. Two years is a long time to keep on saying the same prayer, but it's worked so far. Even if Dad does sometimes fly off the handle, even if Mum does do the daftest things, we're still all together. I wouldn't ever dream of going to sleep without saying my prayer. Please, God, don't let Mum and Dad get divorced. Please, God, let them be together forever and ever 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 and ever. Amen. I have to say it ten times to match my age. The older I get, the more difficult it will be to keep count of all the forevers. But I will still do it. I will always do it. My life is quite uneventful, really, and I cannot think there is going to be very much to record, but Cat says, Go for it. Just put whatever occurs to you. Whatever's important. But now that I've said about my prayer and about Mum and Dad, I can't think of anything else. Just being together as a family is all that is important. Maybe I should describe a day in the life of Mandy Small. It is not... But the one time Mum set the alarm for seven, after Dad had gone off, she forgot to put it back again to six, and Dad didn't wake up next morning. So then he was late, and that made him fly off the handle. And that is why I have taken charge. It is easier for me to do it. I don't mind waking up. After I have shaken Mum, I go into the kitchen and make some tea and toast. I then go back to Mum's room to check that she is still awake. Sometimes she is, but more often she has gone and nodded off again. It isn't Mum's fault that she can't wake up in the mornings. She's just not very good at it. Some people are and some people aren't. And Mum is one of the ones that aren't. But it's all right, because she's got me. She says, What I'd do without my man, I don't know. Mum is sand and I am manned. <laughs> I think that's really neat. Dad is Barry. It occurs to me that if they had another baby and it was a boy, they could call it Harry. And then we would have Barry and Harry. And that would be neat as well. I quite like a baby brother, but Nan says, Heaven forbid, they can't even cope with one of you. So I don't think, alas, that they will have another baby. Apart from anything else, where would it sleep? All we have in this upstairs part of the house is one bedroom for Mum and Dad, one tiny little bedroom for me, one room for sitting in, one which is a kitchen, and one which is the bathroom, though that is just a measly bit of room shaped like a wedge of cheese halfway down the stairs that we have to share with old misery guts, who moans like crazy about tide marks round the bath and hairs in the wash basin. She also used to moan about us using her loo paper, so now she carries her own roll with her whenever she goes there. Now I've forgotten where I was. I know, telling about my day. So, right. As soon as I've eaten a bit of toast and Mum's had her cup of tea, we go down the stairs, on tiptoe because of misery guts, and close the front door behind us really quietly and run up the road together laughing, as it is always a relief to know that A, Mum is not late and won't be threatened with the sack, and B, we have not disturbed old misery guts and been yelled at. Poor Mum. She hates being yelled at. She's quite a timid person, really. I'm more like Dad. I am fierce. What my nan calls aggressive and upfront. But she can talk. We both take after her. <laughs> Dad's dad, my grandy, is well under her thumb. That's what Mum says anyway. Mum hasn't got a mum and dad. She was dumped when she was just a little kid. I think it must be so terrible to feel that you're not wanted. That is something I have never felt. <laughs>